this is actively harmful to people's mental health and it's not just an in the moment thing. This is something that will harm somebody for the foreseeable long-term future. And it drives me banana pancakes that we've just dressed it up with a flower headband and been like, <laughs> it's fine. It's totally, we're just girls just chatting about girl things. Like, no, no, you're not. Like, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. <laughs> Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before or hi, welcome if you're new. My name is Mickey, I'm a therapist and we talk about therapisty things on this channel. Today we're talking about Girl Defined because they suck, um, but also because there's just like a gold mine of content that really is the antithesis to mental health. So let's get into it. But before we do that, uh, if you are new here and you haven't subscribed yet, please go subscribe, like the video, do all of the things that I'm supposed to ask you to do. Also, I saw that a bunch of you are new um, because you hopped over from Fundy Fridays. Uh, hi, Jen. Thanks for coming. If you guys are new, the answer to your question, Jen, yes, I want to be friends. So hit me up. My DMs are always open. This video is called, Does God Want Me to Embrace My True Self? In all caps. Okay, let's watch this. To take it more of a Christian turn, does God <laughs> want me to be true to myself? Yeah. That is like so deceptive because yeah. it sounds really good, but it is so far from what God's word actually tells us. What's up, sisterhood? It's Bethany and Kristen. Crushed it. <laughs> we nailed that one. And I was actually thinking, okay, I was listening to a podcast, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, and the person in the podcast was like, well, to share my... I'm sorry. <laughs> um... I have seen a couple, this is unrelated, but I've seen a couple videos that are like compilations of the way that they are passive aggressive with each other and now I can't unsee it the way that they look at each other when they film videos. It, Kristen looks like she hates her and it is like sad but also funny. And I'm sure you've heard people say that all of the time. Like, mm -hmm. I, have mm -hmm. you heard yeah. people say that? Like, yeah. my truth and or, yeah, to share my truth, to share my my story, to share my experience, whatever, my, my, my. And so I was thinking and I was like, you know, it's really interesting because oftentimes people nowadays are applauded if you say like, yes, thank you for being bold and sharing your truth. Like, wow, amazing. Mm -hmm. But then I was thinking, I was like, well, technically, according to that logic, I share my truth and we share our truth here on Girl Defined all the time, but it's not applauded and accepted. Like, come on, people, play by your own rules, you know? Like, we want to see 100% yes. thumbs up on this video. Yes. Because we're bringing our truth, okay? Yeah, we're bringing our truth, but. I feel like this is actually a very interesting glimpse into their minds. I think they really think that the, the secular view of internet commentary is an echo chamber. And I think they really think that speaking your truth and people being allowed to say things that are like, you know, not supportive of religion, for example, means that they should be allowed to say whatever the fuck they want and get no consequences from that, which is frustrating to me. And this is not meant to be political content. Oh, I forgot to give a caveat, by the way. <laughs> Hopefully we're not too late in the video that I lost those of you who need this caveat, but this, here's the thing. We've talked about this before on all of the Christian fundamentalist, girl defined Paul Morgan videos. Um, but this content is not meant to be critical of people who are Christians or people who are like normally religious. These people are not normally religious. These people are fundamentalists, which is not the same. I don't care what you do in your personal time with your religion. That's none of my business. It's none of my business to like police what people believe or don't believe. And it also has nothing to do not nothing, but it has little to do with the work that I do. But the reason that we're talking about this content is because these people use their very cult-like religious-ish beliefs to peddle views that are anti-mental health and that are actively harmful and shameful to people who are trying to do the work that I help people do. So that's why we're talking about it. Please don't be in my comments talking about, I can't believe that you would attack Christians this way, because I'm not. I'm not talking about Christians, we're talking about these people, so take that for what you will. But this type of commentary I think is really interesting because I really think that they are under the impression that they should just be allowed to say whatever they want to say and everyone should just leave them alone because they're speaking their truth. Like I think their perception of the secular world is that we just like hype each other up all the time and we're just like, yeah, good for you. No consequences for anybody. And the only reason that they're being held to task is because they're religious when actually it's just because what they're saying is hateful and stigmatizing. <laughs> Bethany and Kristen, if you ever end up watching this, the reason that we criticize you is not because you're religious, it's because you're sharing views that are hateful and stigmatizing and actively harmful to people. So it has nothing to do with your religious beliefs. It wouldn't matter if you were 
Jewish or Islam or like any other denomination of Christianity, if you're sharing things that are anti-mental health, I have beef with you, so. In reality, actually, like we don't care about bringing our truth or to share my truth. Like we don't want our truth. Our mm -hmm. truth truly is lame. Like we want to get to God's truth because that's all that matters, so. But also I'm gonna complain about the like ratio on this video and turn off all the comments on our YouTube channel and turn off all the comments on our Instagram. But I don't care about criticism though. Like I'm so, I'm fine, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I just had to say that like, play by your own rules, yes. come on, right? <laughs> well this idea of should I be true to myself or do, to take it more of a Christian turn, does God <laughs> want me to be true to myself? Yeah. And when we ask that, and it is a really popular question, a popular thought, like, does God, well, God loves me, God is love, so he must want me to be happy, so therefore he must want me to believe and, and act live on out, what yeah. I feel is true, live out my true authentic self, and where does that authentic self come from? Well, it comes from within. It comes from who I think I am, it's my truth, therefore what I think I am, and that's how I live, and God's happy with me, right? And that is like, it's such twisted thinking, it's so deceptive because yeah. it sounds really good, but it is so far from what God's word actually tells us. now. I just want to read a few verses about what God actually says about us and our hearts and our thoughts yeah. and our emotions because we tend to elevate ourselves and put us up really high, so high that in fact we can determine what's true and what's yeah. false and we can determine everything about our lives and our feelings are the ultimate authority. But then we go to God's word and instantly we get humbled yeah. in a good way because we recognize that, oh, he's the creator, he's God, he's awesome oh, I'm the creature, I'm the created, oh, he created me in yeah. his image to submit to him. Like, okay, got it. So just listen to this, Jeremiah 17, 9, a popular verse. Actually, I don't know. Normally I don't leave the scripture in, but the only reason we're leaving this in is because it's relevant to a point that I'm going to make later, so bear with me. I'd say it's very popular. It's, <laughs> it's kind of well known, but I don't think we actually listen verse. to what it's saying. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Okay, this is the ESV, a very popular version, desperately sick. Who can understand it? And so God's word is telling us that our heart, our heart, which is our feelings, our thoughts, um, our emotions flow from our thoughts, from our feelings. God is saying your heart is so deceitful. Another version literally says wicked. Yeah. So deceitful, so wicked, above all things, so desperately sick. Who can understand it? Like why, if you're believing God's word as a Christian and you're, you're accepting his definition for your heart, why would you then trust everything you're feeling as your ultimate truth and base your entire life and identity and purpose on that? Yeah. This is the thing that is, ooh, this stuff drives me banana pancakes. Like, I can't deal with this. I, I, I don't understand. Again, I think this is a very interesting window into their lives and into their mindset because their perspective about the secular world is that we're really out here basing our authentic selves on one singular facet of our humanity when really like the relevant research and the, the sort of school of thought for the most like recent developments that we have in psychotherapy and psychology informs us that the best way that we can create a shame resilient self um, and and a strong sense of self-esteem is to, I call it diversify your assets when I talk to my clients about it, but essentially we're creating a sense of self that's formed on a bunch of different things. So when we sink all of our eggs in one basket, it sets us up for failure. When we do the thing where I, our identity is defined by a singular characteristic, and then for example, let's say that characteristic changes or we feel differently about it or we're not able to pursue that interest or hobby anymore, that's incredibly damaging, right? So when we diversify our assets and we develop our sense of self based on a number of different facets, like the people that we spend time with, the things that we're interested in, our career, our interests, our hobbies, our friends, like that forms like a very well fleshed out human being and allows us to be secure in ourselves. It also creates shame resilience. And so it's very confusing to me that this, this is really what they think like the secular world is telling people to do that's just what you do. Like just because they are people who form their identity based on religion only 
doesn't mean that everyone else does that, which for the record, that's very unhealthy. Even if you are a religious person, I would encourage you to look outside of that and to give yourself permission to develop your identity outside of religion alone because you're a complex and wonderful human being who deserves to have interests and relationships and hobbies and things about you that don't just revolve around religion. You're not in fact a robot. It frustrates me and it makes me mad because again, this is like the argument that they're using to try and suck people in primarily vulnerable young women into their very cult-like mentality of like, drink the Kool-Aid, be part of our religion. And like, ew, that's, it's toxic, it's abusive, it's inappropriate, it's an abuse of power. It, ooh, it pushes my buttons, it pushes my buttons. Like that doesn't seem wise, mm -hmm. right? And that's why God's word is warning us to say, don't, I know you have that tendency, but don't do it. Also, this, this again, I think is a very interesting glimpse into their minds because this rhetoric about like your heart is inherently wicked and like who could understand or excuse me, sick, desperately sick, who could understand it? Um, me. Hi, it's me. Hello. I rarely flex on my degrees on this channel, but I have two degrees, thousands of hours, and at least one, maybe two licensures, hopefully soon, that make me especially qualified to understand the unique inner workings of people's psychology. Like there's a whole field about it, ma'am. There's a whole last profession, several actually, dedicated to understanding the inner workings of people's hearts, both figuratively and literally, actually. I don't know anything about your actual heart, but I know lots about your like, you know, emotional heart inside your, inside your brain. So I just like, this is what I'm saying to you where like, just because Kristen and Bethany have made the choice to base their identity solely on the musings of a bunch of old uh, men from an ancient document doesn't mean that I have to, it doesn't mean that you have to, and it doesn't mean that that's what everybody else is doing just with different stimuli. That's not how it works. Like, I agree that that's a problematic thing to do to base your identity solely on one thing, except that they're out here doing it and they say that it's fine because it's like the ultimate truth. And like, again, I don't care what you do with your time if you're religious, like that's none of my business, but it's inappropriate and abusive and irresponsible to use a platform of their size to advocate that people actively turn their back on the most relevant research that we have to lead a fulfilling and safe and shame resilient life because she said so. Like, whatever. Or how about this, Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with mm. all vigilance for from it flow the springs of life, the issues of life, yeah. another verse says. So guard your heart, be careful, don't just believe, don't let things into your heart. This is the other thing. D hold on. Heart in your mind that are false, don't just yeah. believe whatever comes out of it because the, from it, <laughs> the, 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 from it flow the springs of life, the issues of life, your actions, your choices. So be very, very careful. And then <sighs> this, is why the video is gonna be titled what it is. Because essentially what she's saying is that you need to be constantly on guard and like hyper vigilant about any of the thoughts and feelings that you have that may run contrary to her religious beliefs. If you wanna be like a good part of the religion, in order to do that, you have to be constantly policing your own thoughts, your own feelings, your own bodily sensations even, um, and again, this is the antithesis to mental health. This is actually a really great way to develop mental compulsions and to create a risk factor for developing OCD. Now, don't get me wrong. OCD is a neurodivergency. It's not something you can catch. It's not like the flu. However, the severity of your OCD, the presentation of your symptoms with OCD can very much be influenced by your environment and religious scrupulosity is like very popular in religious environments, obviously. Um, and this type of rhetoric is what pushes people over a cliff with that type of thing. And it's so frustrating to hear someone talking about this again, because they have no relevant training or credentials or anything to be talking about mental health. And I don't even think that they recognize that they're doing it, which is worse, honestly, because they're just out here like, burp, 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 burp. like, no, you can't. <laughs> it's again, this is dangerous. This is irresponsible. 
This is an abuse of power. And th the other thing about this that I think makes me especially mad is that if this were aimed at other adult women who were able to appropriately and, you know, make informed decisions about the content that they were consuming, I still take issue with that because it's, again, irresponsible and inappropriate. But I guess at least that makes it a little better. But this content is specifically targeted at young women. This content is specifically targeted at people who are in a stage of development that's inherently vulnerable, who are in a part of their lives in which they're insecure, they are struggling with feelings of shame, they're in a place in which they're very easily influenced, and they know that. They know that and they're doing that on purpose, which is predatory as fuck, and that's bothersome to me. Because if your religion is as great as you say it is, you shouldn't need to fucking suck people in in this predatory nature. It, it, upsets me and it's frustrating to me because also these are the people who end up in my office 10 years later who don't understand why they have no ability to process emotion or deal with their their bodily impulses and why they can't feel things in the moment because they've been suppressing it for years and years and years. This is actively harmful to people's mental health and it's not just an in the moment thing. This is something that will harm somebody for the foreseeable long-term future and it drives me banana pancakes that we've just dressed it up with a flower headband and been like <laughs> it's fine it's totally we're just girls just chatting about girl things like no bitch no you're not like this is fucking dangerous this is dangerous proverb or psalm 51 10 is a beautiful prayer um that david wrote in psalm 51 saying to god in humility create in me a clean heart mm. a pure heart another version says oh god renew a right spirit within me. Yeah. It's an acknowledgement that my, what I think about myself, what I think about my truest self, um, God doesn't actually want us to embrace yeah. our version of our truest self. He doesn't want us to yeah. be true to ourselves. He wants us to be true to his word. Great. So let's like serve up a side of, of shame with our recommendation that you develop mental compulsions. Honestly, I think this is the closest that I will ever get to feeling pity for Bethany and Kristen. Because if this is at all a window into what their lives are like, this sounds fucking exhausting. I can't imagine walking around all day, every day, policing the thoughts and the feelings that I have and actively shaming myself for everything, anything and everything that I'm thinking or feeling as being wrong or wicked or, or not of the gospel, not godly, like fucking fuck. That sounds terrible. I don't feel bad for them still because they made the choice to perpetuate this fucking advice. But again, I think this is the closest I will ever get to pity for them because this sounds terrible. And again, I don't understand why they would, I do understand, we'll talk about it later, but it sucks that they're choosing to perpetuate this. Yeah. He wants us to be true to him and what he says about our identity, about who we are, about our purpose. And that begins with humility and saying, God, my heart is deceitful and wicked. It is plagued by sin. Help me to renew mm -hmm. my mind by your truth, like Ephesians says, to go to your word for truth and then to define my truest self based on who you mm. say I am and how you call me to live. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think even if you just don't go to like specific scripture passages, but you look at scripture as a whole, the whole story, it's like, wow, you know, God created us. We, uh, you know, lived in this perfect world, perfect relationship with him. But then in Genesis sinned, 1, yeah, in Genesis 1, then we sinned. And then there's this whole story of building up to God's redemption. And Jesus yeah. is this central character. Then he comes and he makes a way to save us because not because we have this truth and we're so good, but because we don't and we're broken yeah. and we're lost and we're needy. And then he comes and saves us. But ultimately then it's still that battle. We still live in this fallen world. We're not just ultimately perfected here. And so we have to battle in this world. And then one day, We'll be back, like, you know, the redemption of that perfect garden. You cannot convince me that this isn't a death and birth cult. You cannot fucking convince me that these people aren't yearning for death because the things that they say are so alarming. If someone was in my office and saying these things to me, I'd be like, we need to have a quick convo, <laughs> a little chat about passive ideation because that's wild, first of all. But again, this is what I'm saying about how I don't have any beef with people who are regular Christians, because a lot of you have pointed this out in the comment section of the other two girl defined videos. Thank you guys for still being engaged with those. I appreciate it. That the, the sort of belief that like you're not enough and that's okay is not inherently toxic if you phrase it in the right way. And I agree with that. We talked about that a little bit in the video that like this idea that 
human beings are inherently imperfect and so Jesus came to earth or whatever to save us because he loved us. Like, that's kind of nice. You know, like that seems like a nice thing to do. I get that. I get why that would make people feel good and I understand why that's a, an alluring belief for some people. So like, go off. That's again, none of my business. But the problem that I take with this is that they say, we're fallen, we're broken, and Jesus came here to save us. Still not good enough though. Like, I don't get it. Like, even within the, the context of your own religion, does it make any fucking sense? Like, why did he show up here then? Like, why did he show up here if we still suck and like everything's fucked? It, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And it just seems like this way to justify the large scale suffering that happens in these communities. Because again, you can't convince me that these people are living their best lives. There's no way <laughs> because all of the things that they're saying are these like very thinly veiled glimpses into the life of a person who is struggling with a high level of shame, a high level of anxiety, and a, a deep rooted fear of their own self, like their own, it's like the calls coming from inside the house, like they're afraid of their own brains. And I am just mortified that they're choosing to take that experience and instead of honoring that like, hmm, that's weird. The things that my parents raised me with, like, I don't feel good, it like, seems wrong. Maybe I should do some introspection about that. They're like, no, no. Really the answer is that I should just like keep white knuckling my way through life and like force other people to do it. And that'll justify the life decisions that I've made. Like, no, 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 no. We should normalize being able to change your mind and pivot your life direction at any time because this is not right. With him where all things will be perfected and we will be with him face to face and we'll no longer battle these sinful yeah. hearts. So I think if you understand scripture as a whole, you'll see like, oh, following my truth or my desires or my, who Feelings, I think I am. Yeah. yeah. Who do I, what do I say truth is? Doesn't even make sense with the story of scripture. And it was actually interesting as we were talking about this, I, I Googled this really quick and um, it's from the gospel coalition, a great website mm -hmm. where you can look and read all sorts of incredible articles and videos and all that stuff. But when you think about it, like, okay, living truth to myself and who I think I am and all of that, when you think about it, it's like, it really doesn't make any sense. One, it's illogical because if I insist something is true for me, it doesn't actually make it true. So when we think like, I'm going to live out my truth or be yeah. true to myself, it's like, just because we insist that doesn't even make it true. Because so we're this is the other thing. So the, <laughs> this is like their thing that they keep coming back to. They're like, well, you, just because it's your truth doesn't mean that it's true. Actually, it does. I did a lot of uh, research or searching yesterday um, for relevant research. And I will put all the links for those in the description. As it turns out, Bethy, we have a lot of reliable uh, evidence-based um, randomized control trial research to support the things that I'm saying. Hi, editing Mickey here. I don't know why I talked about this and then didn't elaborate. So I figured I'd just record a voiceover real quick to explain what I'm talking about. Basically what I'm referring to is what we talked about in the neuroplasticity video that went up last week. So if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend I will put it in the eye. But what I'm talking about here is the brain's process of repeating thought patterns often enough that they begin to feel true and they feel like our reality. This is why reality is inherently subjective from one human being to another and why we all experience things differently. It's because our brain is primed to think about things in different ways based on the experiences that we've been through. The reason that this grinds my gear Years, that girl defined says that your your subjective truth is wrong is because what they're yamming on about is their own subjective truth just because they feel emboldened to talk about theirs because it's their interpretation of what a bunch of men wrote in an ancient document doesn't make it any more or less real than another person's subjective reality and it's both condescending and inaccurate to say that they have the authority to decide what counts as objective truth or not so um that's why I was upset about this. Okay, anyways. This thing that they're telling people to do to constantly police their thoughts puts people at risk for developing a whole host of different mental disorders, obviously depression and anxiety chief among them. Like I said, I will link all of the research in the description. Where's it even coming from? Yeah, where's it coming yeah. from? Research. And then they also say it's unspiritual because the Christian faith is liberating since we don't have to build our lives on our own truth. It's mm -hmm. not my, it's not like, this is all about me and my own little world. This is the other thing. This is why I say that I'm not taking beef with people who are normal Christians because normal Christians don't say that in order to be a good Christian, you have to full reject 
anything that has to do with science or the world or basically anything that isn't your your religious text. That's wild to me. It is completely possible. There are lots of people who do it that are, are actively religious and are still good people who are still kind people who still believe in science who are still participating in this world in a kind and compassionate and productive way. Brenda from God is Grey is one of them. She's a wonderful human being who's also religious um, and I occasionally watch her content just because she's a freaking ray of sunshine. So I would highly encourage anybody <laughs> who is religious in that aspect to full reject this bullshit and go and seek out content from other Christian um, influencers who don't advocate that you participate in activities that are going to put you at a higher risk for developing mental illness. We look in scripture, it actually frees us from that. It's the most spiritual thing that we can do is to trust God and be freed from our the bondage of our own like humanity, you know? So I think taking a like, I don't know, what do you call it? Like when you get up and see the bigger bird's picture? eye view? <laughs> the bird's eye Anyone who describes their life as a bondage in humanity is not a happy person. I'm sorry. I know that lots of people speculate about the happiness in their marriages and their relationships and I don't super love that because I talked about this in the Paul and Morgan video. I don't super love that. I don't necessarily think that it's responsible. But I find it hard to believe that somebody who describes their life on earth as being in bondage to humanity is out here living their best life. Higher, I wanted something bigger, like the, the bird's 5, eye, bird, whatever it is. We realize that there is a, a much more free, a yeah. much like the, the picture is just so much bigger. Um, it's like long-term vision, not just right here, right now. Um, and so as Christians, I think that we need to obviously see what God says specifically about our heart, but then also ask ourselves like, okay, am I a Christian who believes yeah. all of scripture or do I just want to pick and choose even like, oh no, those verses don't even matter. God's whole word doesn't matter. The gospel doesn't really matter. This is the other thing. I try not to get involved with the religious shit because I'm not religious. I don't identify with Christianity anymore, but uh, like <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. The whole like cherry picking thing, grinds my gears because anybody who is a Christian that is like living in today's world is cherry picking the Bible. There is absolutely no way to like word for word abide by all of the things that are in the Bible. And so for them to like throw shade at people for not wanting to police their own thoughts as being cherry pickers, like shut up, shut up. This is my, my truth, myself. I want to live according to my own desire. So I think that it's pride. It's pride. Yeah. yeah. We just, I don't know. I think that we need to be women and young women who are committed to chasing truth, who are committed to saying, not my will, but your will, God. And even if it's hard, mm -hmm. even if it's countercultural, I want to identify with who you say that I am. And I want to live out who you say I should be yes. as a Christian woman. Um, so yeah. yeah. Does God but why though? Like this is, <laughs> this is the other thing I'm going to, wrap it up I promise but <laughs> I want to put it out there again I'm not a person who identifies with Christianity it's not my thing however for those of you who are Christian I do want to put it out there and encourage you that it is entirely possible for you to participate in Christianity or your religion of choice in a way that's safe for you in a way that's fulfilling for you in a way that is life-giving and adds value and joy and a sense of community to your life without doing this. Please don't listen to people who say these things that unless you are 100% in and you read every word in the Bible as absolute fact that you're not a real Christian and you're not good enough, that's toxic as fuck because you are allowed to participate in whatever your religion of choice is in whatever way makes sense for you. My goal on this channel is to talk to people about the best ways that they can structure their lives and use day-to-day -day activities to improve their overall health and sense of happiness in this world. And so this stuff grinds my gears because you don't need to listen to people's advice like this in order to be like the goodest Christian. You're allowed to take what works and leave the rest. And like, I'm not going to speak to your eternity or your salvation or whatever. I don't know anything about that. But I will speak to the effects that 
religion can have on mental health and we know that people who have a positive relationship with their religious community who have a positive relationship with God who have actually in the research it's referred to as a secure attachment with God meaning that you don't perceive God to be a punisher who hates you um, you perceive God to be a person who loves you and values you overall have a higher quality of, of life and, and life satisfaction God want us to be true to ourselves no, he wants us to be true to his word and true to who he says we are and to be renewed by the gospel yeah. and the transforming power of Christ. We can't do it on our own. His redeeming work, the work of Christ on the cross when we place our salvation in him. Alone. Whatever, we're not listening to the rest of this. I don't care. Again, I want to be clear. This advice is the antithesis to mental health. I'm going to leave lots and lots and lots of links in the description for you guys to peruse at your leisure. There are so many ways that you can participate in religion, again, that are life-giving, that are joyful, and that increase your overall satisfaction in life, but also facilitate an environment for healthy, like, mental health and this is not that. So feel free to reject all of this advice. Yeah, I want to be clear for anybody who is confused up to this point, this is advice that runs opposite to all of the relevant research about the best way to create a shame resilient life um, and also to not expose yourself needlessly to risk factors for developing mental illness. So don't listen to this advice. This is terrible. I also want to give the caveat here that I gave in all of the other sort of fundamentalist cult-like videos. Please don't go hate watch their content. Please don't give them clicks and views. It only makes it worse. Um, I would encourage you to seek out their content if you want to look at it or you're interested in it just because it's like you know, a kind of a train wreck. Check out other channels like Jen from Fundy Fridays is great. There are lots of other channels on YouTube and like other places on the internet that will allow you to sort of look at what's going on there without directly providing them with, you know, positive feedback and engagement. But yeah, this sucks. This is terrible. As per usual, it grinds my gears. So um, we're gonna leave it there. If you guys like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments. I am very curious to hear what you guys think about this and uh, share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye.